Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. This video is going to be on a uh, couple of the news items that are um, uh, in the news. <laughs> a couple of news items that are in the news um, that uh, have come to my attention that I think were interesting uh, prophetic events. Um, the first one I want to talk about is CERN and how they are trying to open dimensional gates with CERN. Those who are concerned with the CERN, uh, if you are in Christ, you mustn't be worried or fearful because the gates of hell shall not prevail. They are trying to open the gates of hell, and it's because Satan is in control of this world, and he is the prince of the power of the air, and he's trying to open the gates of hell in order to prevent uh, the rapture of the church. He's trying to fight against Jesus Christ. He's trying to prevent his own demise, and so therefore he's using... Hum, the human element, those who are aware of what he's up to and those who are unaware of what he's up to, uh, to stop God. And so they're trying to use the CERN in order to open up dimensional portals, in order to bring the armies of hell, the gates of hell. He's trying, they're trying to open the gates of hell in order to um, hinder God. But as you might have heard, that there was a malfunction. That's because the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. That's in Matthew. Let's just read that. Let's read a, read, read a couple of verses here. I'm not going to read a lot today, but I'm going to read a few. Um, Matthew chapter 16. <clears throat> Starting at verse 16. Just a couple here. Uh, verse 15, actually. And he said unto them, But who say the... Who say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus and answered him and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So the gospel of the knowledge of Jesus Christ uh, will not be, um, the true gospel will not be prevailed against. So if you're concerned about the, about the CERN, uh, do not be concerned. <laughs> if you are in Christ, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 16. I don't know why. Uh, Revelation chapter 6. Um, starting at verse 11. Uh, that was verse 12. And this is when the sixth seal is open. And behold, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became as black as sackcloth as hair, and the moon became as blood. So there's going to be a very large event that happens in the sixth seal. When the sixth seal is open, something is going to happen. Very, And this is going to be a signal for everybody. There's not going to be any doubt in anybody's mind that this is a huge event. Um... And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as the fig tree cast their untimely figs, and when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heavens departed as a scroll. Well, when do we know that happens? That happens when the rapture happens. So this is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The sun becomes black as sack hair, of, a sackcloth of hair, and the moon becomes as blood. And the stars have fall from heaven, as fig trees cast their untimely figs, and she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heavens depart as a scroll. So this is actually the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to rapture his church. And we know this is a fact, because if you read on further, um, and there's a great earthquake. Um, so there's a great earthquake that happens at the time, same time. If you remember the, uh, the resurrection of Christ Jesus, there was a great earthquake. And uh, so this, I think, is, I believe this is, is saying that there, that earthquake is going to shake the dead out of their graves. Those who die in Christ will be shaken. The whole earth is going to shake. And so this is going to be a mighty earthquake. And the great kings and the men of the earth and the rich men and the thieves and the captains and the mighty men and every bondsman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. And they said unto the rocks and the mountains, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand? So they know perfectly well what has just happened. They know that it's Jesus Christ coming. But they're going to look at it a different way. They're going to see is um, as this because they're so full of Satan or, you know, they have not committed themselves or submitted themselves to the gospel of Christ. They're going to be frightened 
and they're going to hide because they know they're going to see it as an alien invasion or they're going to tell people it's an alien invasion. They're going to deceive the world into believing this is an alien invasion, but it's not. It's the rapture of the church. We see that in the next chapter, chapter 7, where you see the, the raptured church standing before the throne of God, and that's in Revelation chapter 7, starting at verse 9 through 17. I'm not going to read that for you, but you can read it for yourself. That is the raptured church in heaven, the church of Philadelphia. And then we don't see till chapter 8, when the seventh seal is open, and that is when the gates of hell begin to, uh, to open and all hell breaks loose on earth in all different forms. All sort, sort of things happen. Christians are beheaded. There is an alien invasion, an alien invasion, which is actually demons from hell when the gates of CERN, the CERN, the CERN opens portals and the hell pours through. So if you're concerned about the CERN, and you're, but you're in Christ, do not worry because the dead in Christ shall rise before this great and terrible day, which is the opening of the gates of hell. Now, I also want to go quickly into um, another news uh, thing that's interesting, that the that 3,000 holes in the Dead Sea have opened up. <laughs> Some, the, I guess the environmentalists or the, those, those who are not in Christ might find this an, an, uh, um, um, a bad thing. But it's not a bad thing. It's actually scriptural that this is supposed to happen. And when I heard 3,000, I immediately thought of those 3,000 souls that were, were um, baptized into Christ and joined the church on the first day of the day of Pentecost when Peter uh, shared the gospel, his first solo speech, his first solo um, sermon, <laughs> his, his premier, uh, you know, preaching of the gospel without uh, the presence of Jesus Christ on the earth. Um, and there were 3,000 souls of 3,000 men. That wasn't talking about the, the, the women and children that were saved that day. It was talking about 3,000 men were added. Or maybe I'm wrong. It could be 3,000 souls. Let's just go there really quickly. Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, my nose is itchy. Allergies. Uh, Three thousand souls. So I guess that includes women and children. That's chapter two, verse forty-one. And they then they were gladly received his word and were baptized. And that that on the same day were added unto them about three thousand souls. So when I heard about the three thousand holes in the Dead Sea, this is what came to my mind: that death is being swallowed up in victory, people. And then we can read that in First. Corinthians, or yeah, First Corinthians. This is a, actually a good sign, uh, because nothing lives in the Dead Sea area anyway. It's all dead. All of it's dead. So I go to First Corinthians thirteen. Oh, excuse me, First Corinthians fifteen, starting at verse fifty. <clears throat> Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the trump. For the trump it shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corrupt corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall we all be so so then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. The Dead Sea, which no nothing can live for miles around, and birds can't pass over because of the salt content, it's dead. <clears throat> oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Be, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through Jesus, our, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always, abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as we know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So, death is being swallowed up. That's what's happening. The Dead Sea is being swallowed up by these 3,000 holes that are in the, the Dead Sea, and it's death is being swallowed up. Now, I want to go further. One last verse I want to read for you is Zechariah. Chapter 14, starting at one, verse 1. This is a long passage. 
Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the house rifled, and the women's ravished. And half of the city shall go into forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against these those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem in the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west, and there shall be a great valley, and half of the mountain shall be removed towards the north, and half of it towards the south. So this is, is referring to Jesus Christ's second coming, not the rapture of the church, but the coming of Christ to the earth to re rule and reign. And when he lands on the Mount of Olives, it's going to split in half to the north and to the south. <clears throat> and, each, and ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach to Az Azal. Ye shall, yea, and ye shall flee, like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah king of Ju Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. So this is re the return of Christ to the earth. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day that shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be that in that day that living water shall go forth from Jerusalem half towards the former sea, that's the Sea of Galilee, and half towards the hinder sea, in, and in summer and winter sh shall it be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth, and in that day there shall be one Lord, and his name one. Um, I think that's all I really need to read there. Uh, maybe I'll just read a couple more verses. Verse 17. Um, uh, verse 16. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations, so this is the rest of the remnant people who are uh, in Europe, I guess, or maybe North America, Asia, uh, all the nations, those who, who managed to make it through the the tribulation without being taking the mark of the beast, um, that everyone that is left, which came against Jerusalem, shall go um, even go up from year to year to worship the King, that's Jesus, the Lord of hosts, and keep the feast of the tabernacle. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So this is just to say that that. Um, Death is being swallowed up, and the waters are going to flow from Jerusalem into both seas that are in Israel right now, the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea, and they shall be, living water shall come and flow into those places, and death shall be swallowed up. So this is a prophetic sign that, this, that the Dead Sea is being swallowed up. It's being prepared for the coming of the Lord. Isn't that exciting? That's exciting. Okay, talk to you later.